what's going on y'all welcome to meat cranium barbecue and review today i'm doing something i've never done before which is a rib cook on a barrel cooker i'm gonna do this on my oklahoma joe bronco i haven't used it in a while so hey you know why not bust it out and and get some ribs done on it and, and besides uh, i want some ribs i'm kind of a uh, offset smoker ribs purist and i really like doing my ribs on an offset smoker but today I'm gonna to try it on the on the barrel. I'm gonna hang them up, see how it goes. I've got two slabs of St. Louis ribs. I'm going to be putting some Heaven Made products. It's incredible. Then the Heaven uh, the Heaven Made products rib rub on there, and uh, just that's all I'm gonna put on it. I'm gonna hang them up. I'm leaving the membrane on, and my binder is water. Um, Ken over at Heavy Metal Barbecue, he kind of has me convinced now that you really don't need all these fancy binders to go on your meat, that just water will suffice. And then also I'm leaving the membrane on to try to keep, to try to hang those, uh, when I hang those uh, ribs on there, I wanna make sure that it doesn't rip all the way down. So that membrane's gonna help reinforce uh, the back of the ribs. And if I can remember what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove that membrane like Ken at Heavy Metal Barbecue did one day. I'm going to remove that membrane before I wrap them. So let's get started. Okay, so here's uh, two slabs of St. Louis ribs and I've already rinsed them off. Yes, I rinse off my meat and y'all know I'm pretty strong on that because if there's bone fragments on there, uh, you want to make sure that you get rid of the bone fragments. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to take this off. This is uh, called Pitmaster Privilege. I will be probably wrapping that up separately and seasoning that up and leaving that, but definitely not going to throw it away. So I'm going to go ahead and trim this stuff off. Alright, so I'm gonna go put these back in the fridge and I'll revisit this when we get back from church. I need me some Jesus. So I'll be back in probably a couple hours, let these uh, seasonings just sit on the meat and I'm gonna show y'all a, a pretty cool hack, a pretty cool trick to light your coals. And this isn't the barbecue dragon uh, fan or the chimney of insanity. This is something completely different. And it's not even a piece of equipment. This is a hack I seen yesterday on, I don't know, it was like channels that's got like 11 million subscribers and they have do all these, like, these different hacks. This is a hack to light your coals. So you are gonna really find this really interesting. So I'll be back here in a couple hours, uh, ciao. All right, what's going on? All right, so I just got back from church. I got uh, redressed all over again, but here's a little trick that I've seen. To light your coal, if you don't have something, to light it, use a bag of Doritos. Check this out. Cheetos are flammable. There you go, Doritos to light your fire. Look at that, ain't that cool? Ha <laughs> ha, freaking Doritos, man. There you go, Doritos are flammable. All right, so it's only been about, i say probably 20 minutes since I put these in. All right, around the, the temperature of about 250 to 268, that's perfect for me. And uh, let's get these, uh, these ribs on. Now what I have in here, I have pecan and I have pear wood that I'm gonna be smoking with today. So I'm gonna try to go two bones, two bones in. One, two, there's one. Go about two bones in, one, two. All right, now I've never done this before, so this is all a new, a new experience for me, hanging up ribs. All right, I took the heat diffuser plate out of here and we're just gonna be going uh, just over to bare coals. That's kind of how I've understood it, how to do. Besides, uh, they're too long. Let's give that a shot. Actually, I could probably put both of these on the same one. There we go, let's try that. Close the lid and come back in an hour and check on that. All right, just a quick note. Um, right here, this little notch, that shit has like one, two, three, four, has like four positions. Of course, four would be like wide open. I really like it on the one notch, especially for ribs. It's, it's like right around the uh, 250, uh, 250, 260 area is the number one notch. And then right here, number two, that's gonna be probably about 275. Then probably 300 for the uh, uh, spot three. You're probably looking at between three and 
350 and 400 for spot number for the uh, fourth notch. So uh, when I'm doing ribs, I keep it right here on, on notch one and it's maintaining a perfect temperature. Um, it's been staying right in the 250, 255, 265 area. It's been in uh, 259 now for the last half hour. I'm gonna keep that on number one throughout this cook. All right, so it's been one hour and current temp inside is 257. It hasn't, it stayed right, it stayed right between 255 and 260 for the last hour. I mean, it's it's just pegged there. So let's get these, uh, let's get these sprayed. We're using water to mist the ribs with. This is complicated, people. So complicated. Oh, getting a nice color on there already. Look at that. Woo! Put, uh, put the, the bits right here on that. Now, kind of a reason why I've always I've never done them in a in a barrel type cooker like this is because I'm afraid of burning them. I just don't want to burn them. So this is all uh, trial and error. This is my first cook. So let's get back. Let's uh, I'm gonna close the lid and miss season about another hour. Hey y'all, this Oklahoma Joe Bronco is a bad, bad, bad little machine. This thing can hold some temperatures really good. So if y'all looking for a, a, a cheaper, actually that's like 300 bucks, not cheaper, it's about, about the average. If you're looking for a good barrel uh, barrel type cooker, I highly recommend this one. This thing's pretty cool. I don't know why I don't cook on it more. Oh yeah, that's right, because I have like 15 different cookers. Okie dokie, it has been two hours. Looking, looking pretty good, I guess. I mean, they're looking kind of brown over here. I'm gonna give these about another half hour. It's running right around uh, 280 now. It kind of had a little spike up. It's been running around about 270, 280. It went up just a little bit, but it's okay. Gonna give it about another half hour, so I need some pullback over here, on the ribs right here. Some pullback here, pullback here, some pullback down here. Uh, it's a real nice pullback, so yeah. I'm gonna, probably gonna pull these about another half hour and go ahead and wrap them. All right, it's been a half hour. It's about, it's fixing to start raining. I'm gonna go ahead and get these uh, ribs off. By the way, using one of these pans to help wrap your ribs is really, really uh, convenient. Uh, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to put some butter down here. And uh, instead of using like the regular brown sugar and uh, honey, what everybody likes to use, I'm going to use maple syrup. I had a, I had a viewer send me some maple syrup, but I think uh, Canadian Jim sent me some, uh, some maple syrup. So that's what I'm going to use right here. Some pure maple syrup. There it is. There you go. This is pure maple syrup. I have a special glaze that's gonna be going on here at the end. Let's see how tender these things are right now. Yeah, it's a good way to go. So I've got it uh, meat tied down. Gonna go ahead and uh, wrap this up. Oh wait, hold on, that's right, I'm supposed to take off the... Uh... Hey Ken, heavy metal barbecue. I'm, re I'm remembering to take off the membrane. Oh yeah, there we go. Let me throw these little pieces in here too, there we go. Check on this and one half, about one half, two hours. All right, so you've been wrapped for one hour and here's the chart of what it's doing right now. It's at 264. It's been maintaining that temperature now for probably about a good, you know, half hour, 45 minutes. I keep clearing the chart out. So that's only about a about half hour, 45 minutes, but you can see what it's been doing. It's been maintaining that little area right there, which is perfect. Exactly the temperature I like for ribs. All right, let's see how tender these things are now. You got a lot of pullback right here. These are. I'm probably gonna be overcooking these a little bit, but that's fine. Ain't nothing wrong with that. A little bit of over overcooked rib. I'm not not cooking no competition here. No, nope. actually no. There's really not that much bend in it. So I can remove that bone though. Okay. Let these keep going for about a half hour. Wrapped up. Now these are here might be done. Ooh, look at those. Oh yeah. Yeah, those are those are well done right there. Those are definitely done. I'm gonna flip these over. If they will flip over. Okay, this here is a smaller rack of ribs, so this here is gonna get done. This rack right here is gonna get done before the one over here. So what I'm gonna do with this, I'm gonna make a special glaze for it. So check out this glaze I wanna make for it. I'm gonna leave this one here unwrapped. Let's, make, let's get a glaze made. 
All right, let's make a real complicated glaze here. All right, so I have my uh, my precision, but I, by the way, I'm cooking out here outside with it. Okay. All right, just put this thing on high. Start. Real complicated Coke. One can of Coke. I have two cans of Coke just in case I, it's not enough. I can pour more in. Here we go. Oh yeah, that's enough. If you want to make a simple glaze, Coke into one of these, boil it until you reduce it down until it gets a little bit thick. I've done this with Dr. Pepper before. I haven't done it with Coke, but I have done it with uh, I have done it with Dr. Pepper, and it came out fantastic. So this is going to be a Coke glaze for the rib. No barbecue sauce needed. And if you want to cut back on the sugar, go with like a Coke Zero. A Coke Zero work will work great. All right, I'll be back when this is starting to uh, boil and thicken up. All right, so the Coca-Cola has reduced down, starting to thicken up. You can see the bottom, it pulls back. It's thickened up some. It doesn't yield a lot, but it yields enough. All right, let's get this on some ribs. Okie doke. As you can tell here, they are definitely done. Now it's time for the Coca-Cola glaze. I let that uh, that sit on there for a second. I didn't eat nothing. All right, the wife ate before I did. All right, we'll get enough. I'm gonna cut these up and taste these. These are done before the bigger wreck. Oh, they're good. Okay, so these are definitely done. This is the first time I've used. Um, a, a drum cooker to cook ribs. I really didn't know what to expect. Yeah, these are really, really, really done, but that's okay. My wife likes them like this. Don't you, honey? Yep. She likes them off the bone, and that's pretty much what she's gonna get. Off the bone. Yay me. A boneless, pretty much boneless ribs. The way I like them. Yeah, these are like really done. Yeah. But, they, but they are like super juicy. Check this out. They're good. Look, I know, I know they do them at, in competitions, or it's like bite through, but you know what? This is, I'm not a competition guy. This to me is a perfect rib. This is awesome right here. So I'm gonna try this one right here, okay? Admittedly, it is overdone, but admittedly, we like them like this. That's the way I like them, it's not overdone. <laughs> Good, I'm glad I burned her. Yeah, she's right, she got it. Mm. <laughs> Good, right? That is, wow. Don't that is super me. juicy. Don't look at me and judge me. Mm. That's awesome. The next ribs, next set of ribs, I'll probably hit those spot on. This is a smaller rack, so these got done sooner. The next rack will probably be a lot better. Well, actually, I think these are great. How many so, can uh, I put on my plate? You put, a, you put them all on your plate. I will. All right, so these are the bigger uh, rack right here. So check these out perfect color and they're just starting to break so uh, it's just starting to bend so these are probably gonna come out pretty good See them? Yep. all right I'm gonna let, leave these open and I'm gonna make some more glaze for these right here roll this up and there I go all right coke glaze coming up for that but I'm not gonna show you how to make the coke glaze for these because I already showed you just wait to reduce uh, the coke down probably about 80 percent or it just starts to uh, tighten up and it starts to cool down it's gonna thicken up, it's gonna be kinda of like a syrup, and that's what you wanna put on there. Alrighty, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm just gonna pour some of that, uh, I'm gonna pour that Coke, that Coke glaze on here. So instead of barbecue sauce, you can just use uh, some reduced Coke as a glaze. I've done this before with uh, Dr. Pepper, it come out real good. These on here just a few more minutes, and I'm gonna take them off, and they'll be good. All right, y'all, so the first one got done, was overdone. It was a smaller rack, so it was kind of expected. Anyhow, my wife was really happy, and hey guys, isn't that what really matters? Keep our wives happy. So this is the other rack, the thicker rack. These came out perfect. So got a beautiful smoke ring there. I think, I think it's beautiful. So take a bite of this. 
Mm. Still on the bone. Nice bite through. Mm. That bite through is really good. Got all that, uh, the yeast incredible, the, the rib seasoning, everything is really good on it. That's one of, one of the best uh, backs of ribs I've ever made. Seriously, it is that good. So in this video, I showed uh, y'all how to make ribs on the Oklahoma Joe Bronco, which is my first time making it. And surprisingly, they were <laughs> phenomenal. I don't know how they compare to the offset, but I know I might, uh, I might change to being an offset and a drum smoker when it comes to ribs. These are awesome. These are freaking amazing. I gave y'all two food hacks, Doritos to light your coals, and the Coke as a glaze, also Dr. Pepper. You can use the Dr. Pepper. If you want to go with a, a no sugar option, you can go with Coke Zero or even like a Pepsi Zero. Will also work as well. Reduce it down, makes a perfect glaze. It works perfect for chicken as well if you want to put on chicken. The uh, the hack I got for the Doritos, I'll, I'll put that video down below. I think it's, a, um, I think it's a, a channel called Blossom. They got like 11 million subscribers. So, every, so a lot of people know of Blossom. I think it's what it is. Hey, I'll put that video down below in the description so y'all can watch all these different hacks. It's really cool. In fact, I'm probably going to try some more of them. Anyhow, uh, I think that's about it. Anyhow, like, subscribe. I'll see you next week. Ciao.